uh, how do we really use multiple words? I am sure you uh, understand based on what we have done, we have been talking about uh, the one word learning, right? There is only a biogram that you are looking at. Uh, when you provide V, we want the network to learn love, okay? So, this is a very simple uh, uh, architecture that we have chosen to make you understand the concept of uh, creating the embedding uh, vector. So, once this operation is completed, so we can actually throw away the context uh, layer and the uh, hidden layer. The embedding layer will give you actually the index of the uh, word that we want to really find. Okay. Supposing if you want to find the word vector for love, it is nothing but the index of that row in the embedding matrix. All right. So, now let us uh, take the same thing and extend it to uh, the multiple context word. Right? So, when you have multiple words, how do you really take this forward? So, I am going to be talking about only SIBO model and I am going to be uh, providing an example in the skip gram model as well using Python program. Okay. So, now let us look at this uh, multiple words uh, model. Uh, in this case, uh, we are going to be taking uh, more than one word as a uh, context word, right? So, in this case, C is the number of context words, and then V is the size of the vocabulary, which can vary uh, from uh, ten to one million, depending on the size of your corpus. And then, uh, in this case, HI receives the average. Uh, of the vectors of the input. So, in this case, since there are multiple contexts coming in, the H is a, a linear combination of all of those. So, we call it as an average uh, of the vectors of the input here. And then the computation of the output layer is very similar to what we have done earlier, there is no change there. And then there is an error that is computed. So, we will now have only one again word that we want to find out right based on the context we want to find the target right so we know what the target is because it's a, a learning process uh, and then find the error do whatever uh, we have to do to minimize the error so this is how uh, it works in the uh, multiple uh, words as well so if you use the sibo model for multiple context word it is very similar except for the input to the hidden layer computation. Okay. So, as I mentioned earlier, so this is uh, how we compute the uh, vectors. Uh, the uj is the, is the context vector that we are talking about, correct. So, it is nothing but the uh, context vector, context matrix that we already have and the dot product of it with the uh, hidden layer values. Okay. And then the hidden layer value is nothing but the uh, set of input uh, context word. So, the h is calculated using this formula okay. and then it is given as this. Okay. If you uh, do this dot product, you get the uh, rows of each of the uh, embedding matrix. Again, uh, uh, we can find the error. So, we can borrow the equation, uh, borrow from this equation, we can find the error value uh, using the uh, entropy. Right. So, and this is what we want to minimize. This is again same as what we had seen earlier. All right. Again, uh, if you look at the updation of weights uh, based on the error, there is no change, correct? And then eta is our learning parameter, which varies from 0 0.1 to 0 0.001, or sometimes it could be, and so on. Okay, so you have to really choose this value to suit your need. All right. Um, 
So, what does it learn? So, like in the previous case, uh, it learns the distributed representation of words as a vector. Okay. So, as once this is completed, once you have processed all the uh, input combinations and you have provided the input and trained the network, you will have the distributed representation of every word in the vocabulary. Right. Uh, the learned vectors explicitly encode many linguistic uh, regularities and patterns. So, this is the very important aspect that we have to understand. Right. So, we have been talking about this uh, right from the time of LSI. Correct. A word is known by the company it keeps. You remember that that is from the first. Uh, that means, uh, when the word is surrounded by the similar word several times, then we can really identify what that word means, what that means and so on. Okay. In the same fashion, if these context surrounds similar words, we will be able to relate those similar words, because of the patterns of the context and it, uh, the uh, regularity that surround that particular central word that we are talking about. So, the vectors that we are talking about uh, in the uh, in this model will not just have the details related to it alone, it also has some relationship among the similar words and so on and so forth. Okay. So, it is not a single word representation. So, we will talk, we will see how it is when we go to the example. So, the learning should produce similar word vectors for those words that appeared in similar context. How do we find this out? How do we compare those uh, words to find out uh, whether these words occur uh, in the corpus and they are similar? Uh, can we use cosine similarity? So, for example, if you uh, created one vector and then we have about uh, 1 million word vectors that are created. So, we can take that word and then try to find out the cosine similarity to uh, the rest of the words in the vocabulary. And then uh, using that uh, cosine similarity, you will find out how close other words are with the chosen word. Okay. So, this is another one that we can uh, look at in the example. Uh, does it address uh, stemming like run, running, ran and so on? Uh, this really requires the context to be similar in order for us to really uh, combine these uh, similar words. Right? So, we definitely require a large uh, corpus that uh, keep using these words in similar context. So, if we do if we have different context for each of these words, I am sure no network will really find them out. So, our assumption is based on the FERT, uh, these words can be known by the company it keeps. That means, the, sim the context words surrounding these run, running and ran would be very similar. Only if they are similar, we would be able to take uh, these as similar words. Okay. Uh, see for example, some examples of uh, he runs half marathon, he ran half marathon, he is running half marathon. So, something like this you know to show uh, how we can really relate these words uh, you know when, uh, when we process the corpus. The how about car, cars and automobile. So, it same exam, same uh, explanation hold true here too. Okay, if we, if these words appeared in similar context, then there is a high probability that these words provide higher similarity values. Uh, how about these? Especially in the reviews, uh, if you see again similar context, it's possible that these words could be uh, could, could be found. Uh, could be similar. Okay. So, again the context is the king here. So, if you do not have the right context and these words appear all the time in different contexts, there is no way that we can relate them. Okay. So, that is where these regularities and patterns come into play. So, our basic assumption is these words appear in similar context. 
and it is true in most of the cases. Okay? That is why uh, most of the application that we are going to be uh, developing and that are developed show similarities for these words. All right. Uh, this is another, uh, I am sorry, this is a skip gram model. Okay. So, you have to look at it from this direction. Okay. So, uh, the input layer is here uh, and then we have the hidden layer and the output layer. You know well that for the skip gram, we are going to be providing one input word and the target is going to be our context, correct. Uh, so, we have the embedding matrix we have the context matrix and so on. So, what happens here in the skip gram model? Uh, we when we provide the uh, input, we assume that the a word that is output would be its context words. If not, we go back and keep adjusting the weights and so on, right. So, until the word gets its context right. All right. Okay. Um, so, what I just wanted to mention is, you know, uh, with the last one before the slide on Hickgram, we have concluded uh, the word to vector using the uh, CBO model. Okay. So, CBO model, we have uh, taken the one gram. In the SIBO model, we have taken the bigram to identify uh, the target word, okay, and then we have extended it to multiple uh, context words, and then we also had shown how uh, and what they learn, right, uh, through the examples of uh, the matrices, okay. Uh, all right. So, in the next one as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we are going to be talking about this skip gram and the skip gram, uh, you are going to be providing the uh, central word and the target words are our uh, context words, right. Uh, the computations are very similar, there is no change. Uh, so, what I am going to do right now is I am going to be uh, taking you right into the uh, coding aspect of this. So, this is another simple uh, uh, architecture that shows how uh, you can create a, a skip gram based model. Uh, here we have the input vector and we are inputting uh, many as our uh, word as input and then we have a 300 neuron uh, hidden layer and then we have 100,000 uh, neurons as our output layer which is same as the vocabulary size. So, when you uh, input this, we expect this to uh, provide you the context and these values would be higher than the fast food that you find at the bottom. Okay. So, this is how we actually uh, capture the uh, context on the uh, input word properly. <coughs> 